Mike White does it again. The quarterback plays brilliantly in a huge Jets victory over the Chicago Bears. We break down the game and White's performance today on the Locked On Jets podcast. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, this is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Monday, November 28th, 2022. I'm your host, John B. from gangreennation.com. Thanking you for making the show your first listen or first watch every day. This podcast is free and it's available on all platforms, including YouTube. If you like what you see or hear, hit the subscribe button wherever you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you're listening on a podcast source, please give the show a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give this episode a big thumbs up. These things help the channel out and help other Jets fans find the podcast. Today, today's episode of Locked on Jets is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code Locked On. That's prizepicks.com, promo code Locked On. Well, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. I hope you got to enjoy it with friends and loved ones. Hope you got an early start on your holiday shopping. I certainly hope you enjoyed yesterday's game because the Jets blew the Chicago Bears out 31 to 10. Very workmanlike performance. The Jets took care of business. And the story, just as it was last Halloween, you know, last year it was Halloween. This year it was Thanksgiving weekend. Mike White, in his first start of the season, goes out and leads the Jets to a victory, plays brilliantly. I got to stop doubting this guy. You know, last year, if you were listening in the lead up to the Bengals game, I pretty much said the Jets had no shot with this guy at quarterback. If you're listening in preseason this year, I was questioning why he was even making the roster. He had a kind of a rough preseason. You know, he was not looking good against backups and third teamers. I said, does he really have an arm? Was that Bengals game a fluke? Well, now we know Mike White can play in the NFL. Now, whether he's a starting level quarterback, whether he's a backup, you know, whether he's a spot starter, we, we, we don't know these things yet, but you do this twice in two years. You have a spot in this league. I don't care who the competition is. Last year was the team that almost won the Super Bowl. This year it's a Chicago team that's not great. But still, this was a stellar performance. Mike White gave the Jets everything they needed and more. 22 of 28, 315 yards, three touchdowns. But it goes beyond the numbers. Mike White made this offense work. And you can see it from the opening drive when he took the Jets right down the field for an early touchdown. It just felt like everything was different with this offense. It felt like it, it's it, you could get into trouble reading into stuff like this. But... It felt like his presence lit a fire under these guys on offense. And this was always the caveat. You know, the caveat I always said when the Jets made this decision last week is we don't know what was going on in the locker room. And that that means a couple different things. It means, you know, we don't know how Zach Wilson's comments went over. But it also means these guys are at practice every day. They see Mike White. It was very subtle, but, you know, the Jets recently elevated White from number three to number two. At the beginning of the season, Flacco was the Joe Flacco was the number two quarterback. That's why he started those games against uh, you know Baltimore on opening day, Cleveland, and then Cincinnati. And you know if you've been following things, Mike White being elevated from three to two on the depth chart, maybe that was a sign Mike White was really elevating his level of play. Maybe that was a sign Mike White was really kind of winning over the locker room. And you know we I said last week there was probably roughly equal odds based on what I knew to get any of the three quarterbacks to play a good game. Well, the Jets see these guys every day, and they may have seen something in Mike White. They may have seen that this guy is better, that he's improved, that he was ready to play with more consistency. I understand you could say this was a bad Bears defense, and you'd be correct in saying that, but you can only play the team that's in front of you. Mike White was brilliant in this game, and Mike White produced some of the best numbers any quarterback has produced against this Bears defense so far this year. Now, listen, Mike White, you, you don't need him to throw for 300 yards. You don't need to, you're not going to need him to throw for three touchdowns every week because this is not a quarterback-dependent team. I say this frequently. There, there are two types of quarterback plays. There are the plays where you take what the defense gives you. So, for example, a guy's wide open, so you just throw it to him you know, for an eight-yard gain because he's open. You get the ball to the open receiver. And then there are the, the plays you, you make that you take from the defense, essentially. And that's like a guy's covered and you throw him open, or you hit a tight window pass, or you evade pressure and then hit a guy down the field on a broken play, the Jets need the former. You know, this is not a particularly quarterback-dependent team. You know, it would be great if you could get the latter. You know, Patrick Mahomes is a guy who regularly takes more than what the defense gives him. 
But really, the Jets just need a quarterback who takes what the defense gives them because the rest of this team is really solid. We know this is a defense-first team. This is a team that where the driving force is the defense right now. And that's an ideal situation to develop a quarterback. And that's one of the reasons Zach Wilson's failure to develop, at least to this point, is kind of troubling because the Jets have put a good infrastructure around him. And it goes beyond the defense. We know that the Jets have a solid group of pass catchers. On most weeks, most weeks the running game is going to be pretty solid. So the Jets have a good infrastructure to support a quarterback. They have enough here that they, they don't need the quarterback to do it all. They just need the quarterback to do what Mike White did yesterday. And Mike White, I, I shouldn't say that because Mike White did make some big-time throws. One touchdown to Garrett Wilson was a great throw. It was a great throw. He, he put it in a perfect place. You know, there was talk that you know, one of the defenders reached up and almost intercepted. I don't think he, that guy really had much of a shot at intercepting. I think his hands got close. I think the ball placement and timing were absolutely perfect on that throw. But more than anything, Mike White showed an ability to run this offense. That's what the Jets need. They need a guy who can go, re, make the proper, go through the proper progressions. You know, last week against New England, one of the things I was seeing out of Zach Wilson is it seemed like he was almost like reading the play wrong it seemed like he was like his first the first receiver he was looking at was not the guy he was supposed to be featuring and it was throwing the timing of patterns off so you need a guy who could get through the progressions you need a guy who could deliver an accurate football i mean how many times have we seen through the last two years zach wilson airmail an easy pass a guy the guy's like five yards away it's happening too frequently you need a guy who can get the ball to his receivers accurately you need a guy who can identify the check down you know sometimes it's not all there and Zach Wilson, unfortunately, has a tendency to bail on the pocket when you know, what he wants isn't there. Sometimes the checkdown's open. Mike White took checkdowns all day. I saw some people kind of, you know, ish, kind of giving skepticism about what, what Mike White did yesterday. And they said, well, it was a bunch of checkdowns. Well, that's the point. If the checkdown's there, check, take the checkdown. You know, an eight-yard gain, six-yard gain, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with taking a positive play on, you know, most, most downs. I mean, listen, if it's like, you know, you're down late in the fourth quarter, then maybe you have to force something. But there's nothing wrong with not forcing the ball. There's nothing wrong with checking that, checking the ball down, taking a positive play, and moving down to the next down. You don't need to hit a home run on every pass. Sometimes singles and doubles do are just as good. Sometimes singles and doubles give you exactly what you need in a given situation. And you also want to protect the football, which has been an issue. To be honest with you, like that's actually like the biggest question mark I have with Mike White because he was pretty interception prone last year. He did throw one pass into danger that was almost picked off by Eddie Jackson, but aside from that, a pretty clean game. This is what the Jets need. The Jets, and I think, like against tougher defenses, Mike White's probably not going to throw for 300 yards. He's probably not going to throw for three touchdowns. But the level of play he performed at yesterday is what the Jets will need to win football games this year. And if that's what they get, they're going to be in almost every game they play because their defense is excellent. The run game, you know, the run game got got going yesterday, even with Bam Knight and even with my good friend Ty Johnson, guy who I've been very critical of. So it shows you, and even with you know, still some backups on the offensive line, Jets ran the. It took them a little while to get it going, but the Jets were able to run the ball effectively. So they don't need the quarterback to be Superman. They need the quarterback to go out there and make the plays and understand the system. I, how many times have I said over the last couple of weeks? Zach Wilson needs to play within the system. When Zach Wilson freelances, it, get, it got him into trouble. When Zach Wilson plays within the system and takes the easy completions, he's been pretty solid. Well, Mike White did more than that. This was the best quarterback performance the Jets have had this year. And I'm not going to sit here and say Mike White now has the job for the rest of the season. But when you play like that, relative to what the Jets have gotten a quarterback this year from Flacco and from Zach Wilson, and I understand people are going to look at Flacco's numbers. Flacco never played like that. Flacco had a nice stretch at the end of the Cleveland game. Flacco never played like that. Flacco boosted his statistics in garbage time situations. That was the best, far and away, the best Jets quarterback performance of the year. In fact, if you could say, I, I don't, I don't even, I'm not even sure it's debatable. The last two seasons, the two best single game quarterback performances the Jets have had have both been by Mike White. If you go back and take that Bengals game last year also. So I look at the situation. I'm not going to say Mike White's now the starter for the rest of the season. But I am going to say, I think it's going to take more than one bad game for him to lose the job. Because when you look at what the Jets have gotten from quarterback this year, and you look at what Mike White gave them yesterday, I think Mike White's earned more than one start. I think now if he plays two bad games in a row, three bad games in a row to follow this up, you know, we may have a different discussion. But I think for, for now, he's the starter. I think for ne next week, he's the starter, certainly. And the week beyond, I think he's earned a reprieve, even if he has a bad game. Because I think this game was so good, so promising, and you have not seen... 
the Jets offense have this kind of ceiling at quarterback all season long. There was more that was good about Mike Voigt's performance, though. It goes to a phrase that I really focus on when I evaluate football. It's called complementary football. And I'll tell you how Mike Voigt complimented the rest of the team as we continue this Monday episode of the Locked On Jets podcast ahead. This episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Audible. Audible is releasing a new slate of football podcasts that we're sure you're going to love. Find Block Forever now wherever you get your podcasts. Block Forever is a brand new podcast from former NFL All-Pro and former Jet Center Ryan Khalil and Audible. Ryan Khalil was actually the Jet Center the year the Jets signed Mike White in 2019, and Khalil takes the conversation about football to the next level. He gives football fans an insider's look at the game through the eyes of the greatest players and personalities of all time. Khalil sits down with star players, coaches, and former pros across the league to get real about what happens in the field and behind the scenes inside locker rooms, during team meetings, and back at the hotel. You'll hear Christian McCaffrey talk about his love-hate relationship with fantasy football, and Juju Smith-Schuster give his most honest opinions about other players and positions in the league. New episodes of Block Forever will be recorded and released every week ahead of Thursday Night Football. Ryan and his guests discuss topics like the player's psyche, sports betting, playing through pain, being a leader, and how to deal with combative teammates. Nothing is out of bounds here. It's available for free on Audible or wherever you get your podcasts. Catch the full Block Forever series available wherever you get your podcasts. Available everywhere now. Audible. Get in the game. Thank you for making Locked On Jets your first listen or first watch every day. This podcast is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. We're here breaking down a Jets victory. The Jets beat the Bears 31-10 to yesterday at MetLife Stadium. Mike White was the star, throwing for 315 yards and three touchdowns in his first start of the season. There was a lot to like out of this performance. One of them is that the Jets played what I call complimentary football. I just spent the first segment telling you the Jets don't need stellar quarterback play all the time. Most weeks, just efficient quarterback play is going to be enough for them to be in games and win games with the defense they have, with the run game they have. But occasionally, you do need the passing game to lift you up. And sometimes, you know, it, sometimes it'll be for a week. Sometimes you, you might be in a slump. You'll need a couple of weeks where your passing game really elevates itself. Sometimes you just need it to happen for like part of a game. And that first drive, Jets went right down the field on their first drive. That lifted the Jets up because the defense got off to a slow start in this game. In fact, this game kind of uh, gave me a flashback. Let me take you back 26 years to 1996. I was a kid. It was also the Sunday after Thanksgiving. It was also a day where there was pouring rain at the Meadowlands. My uncle got tickets to the Jets game against the Houston Oilers. So this is how long ago it was. It was the Houston Oilers. It was the 1-15 in 15 season with Rich Kotite. The Jets were terrible. Nobody wanted... I mean, my, my, uncle got, my uncle got these tickets, I'm convinced, because no, nobody wanted to go to this game. So there was somebody at his office who just gave away his tickets because nobody wanted to go see the Rich Kotite Jets. So we go to this game. The Jets are terrible. It's pouring rain at the Meadowlands. And in pregame warm-ups... Neil O'Donnell, who at the point at that time was the Jets' starting quarterback, I'm watching him. This happens right in front of me. Drops back to pass, warm up, slips on the wet turf because it's pouring rain, suffers a calf injury, misses the rest of the season. Jets lose their starting quarterback in pregame warmups. Now, yesterday we went into the game knowing Justin Fields was out. You know, the Bears had made it clear it, there were there were news reports that Justin Fields was not going to start this game, so Trevor Simeon was going to start in his place. Yesterday, 26 years later, same Sunday after Thanksgiving. Same state, not different stadium, but same venue, Meadowlands. Uh, the game I went to was obviously at the old stadium, not MetLife Stadium, but I'm still at the Meadowlands, Jets home game, pouring rain. The reports come out pre-game that Trevor Simeon suffered a, an injury and Nathan Peterman's going to start for the Bears. And I, I could just got such a sense of deja vu that's happened again. It, it's so weird. The Sunday after Thanksgiving, pouring rain, Jets home game. And I wonder whether that maybe relaxed the Jets a little bit, knowing, first of all, Fields was out, and then hearing Simeon was going to miss the game. Then Simeon ended up playing. So whatever injury he suffered, he apparently was not bad enough to keep him out of the game. But there were some preliminary report reports that he had suffered an injury in pregame warmups, And I wonder whether that, like, calmed the Jets' defense down. Maybe it took some fire out of them, because this was not a great defensive performance at the beginning for the Jets. They allowed the Bears to go right down the field on their first two drives of the game and score 10 early points. And this could have been a bad situation for the Jets because you get an underdog that gets a little momentum. They believe it. Maybe you, as a good team, and it's been a long time since, I can't remember the last time there was a game you went in like this one where you said the Jets should win this game. It's been a really long time. The Jets usually have not been good enough 
where you, where you'd say where you worry about the Jets actually actually looking past an opponent. But yesterday may have been it because Jets have a tough schedule down the stretch. This was like the one game that you looked at and said, okay, that's a that should be a pretty easy win, especially without Justin Fields. But you get behind one of these games, you start pressing, you start feeling the the pressure. It can get bad. And the Jets' run game was not working well early yesterday. So the Jets don't need Mike uh, Mike White or whoever's playing quarterback. They don't need to, to go out and throw for 300 yards every week. And the Jets really did not even need Mike White to play great for four quarters. But occasionally what you'll need, if you want to be a complete team, and if you want to win games in this league, you want to win a lot of games in this league, you usually need to be a complete team that at least doesn't have great weaknesses. And... Mike White helped keep the Jets afloat early when the defense went out and struggled. Because if Mike White doesn't go out there and start the game as well as he did, Jets may be down 10, they may be down 7, they may be chasing the game, and the Bears might be gaining confidence, Jets' defense might start pressing a little bit. There's a lot that could go wrong. And I think the passing game really carried the Jets in the early stages of this game. Then, in the second half, things started to heat up a little bit. You know, the pass rush and... I imagine that the locker room with Jeff Ulbrich and Robert Sala was not a pleasant place for that defense after the first half that they played because they allowed 10 points, which is not great, but the defense was just not. The defense was allowing the Bears to sustain drives. They were missing tackles left and right. I mean, how many open field tackles were you guys either whiffing on or taking bad angles to? There were a lot of bad plays by that defense in that first half, and the Jets were still in position to win the game because of how well Mike White plays. It's what I call complimentary football. And then the second half, they you know, the pass rush really began to heat up. Bryce Huff, I mean, the one sack he had was like it was like the ball was snapped and Bryce Huff was there. Uh, you saw the defensive line start to take control of the game. And the Jets also did get the run game working. And it was interesting because uh, Michael Carter left the game with an injury, unfortunately. And James Robinson was actually inactive. The Jets brought up Bam Knight the rookie from NC State, who went on and had a big second half. And even Ty Johnson broke Ty Johnson broke a couple of nice runs, including a long touchdown run, guy who I've been very critical of through the years. So the Jets eventually got things working. And it was almost like the, the early success of the passing game bought time for the defense and run game to get going. And that's what you like to see. You, you like to see that a team, even if it's not going to be based on the passing attack, even if it's not going to be based completely on the aerial game, at least occasionally can pick things up at least occasionally these guys can carry the team when they need it and that's the sign you know that's a sign you're go- you actually have a shot in this league because you're not going to play great defense for four quarters every game you're going to have games where your defense is off now for the jets you hope there are going to be more games where the defense is on and you hope that the run game doesn't take so long to get going in future weeks but the, at least knowing that you if you need to even if you're not going to depend on it all the time that if you need to, you can lean into this passing game, at least for a little stretch. That's the type of thing that gives you confidence going forward with the Jets. It was a great win. Mike White was not the only star on Sunday. Believe it or not, there were some other Jets who were standout performers. As, as we continue this Monday game recap edition of the Locked On Jets podcast, we'll talk about some of the non-Mike White stars of this Jets victory. Well, if you were a daily fantasy player who had Mike White yesterday, you were probably pretty happy because Mike White threw for more than 300 yards. And if you are a daily fantasy player, let me tell you about prize picks. Here's how it works. You pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. And prize picks offers projections on any sport you watch. So you can play the NFL, but you can also play NBA, NHL, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, NASCAR, and disc golf. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. They have safe and fast withdrawals, and they're currently operational in 30 states and Canada. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. So if you deposit $50, Prize Picks gives you $50. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks gives you $100. And don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100 using Prize Picks. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Monday. We're breaking down a Jets victory. The Jets beat the Chicago Bears 31-10 to yesterday at MetLife Stadium. The Jets improved their record to 7-4 on the season. The Jets are now back in the playoff position 
after a brief one-week hiatus where their loss to New England knocked them to number eight in the AFC. The Jets are now number seven. They got some help on Thursday night as the Minnesota Vikings defeated the New England Patriots. So if the season ended today, the Jets would be in the playoffs. They'd be on their way to Miami for a game against the division rival Miami Dolphins. We'll continue to see how things go, but the Jets control their own fate in the conference and in the division. If the Jets win out, they will win the AFC East title. Big win yesterday against the Chicago Bears. We talked about Mike White being the star. Uh, you know, you got to look. There are other players on offense who really stood out. Garrett Wilson, five catches, 95 yards, a pair of touchdowns. Yeah, Garrett Wilson was one of those guys. You know, Garrett Wilson was a little bit tricky because he did not explicitly call out Zach Wilson. He expressed more general frustration. But if you read between the lines, it felt like, you know, maybe there was something there with Zach Wilson. Well, he responded in a big way. And the Jets, Mike White spread the ball around. And I think that's part of the reason the Jets liked what Mike White brought to the table yesterday, because if you look at the way this team is built, the Jets did not go out this offseason and pay a ton of money for a big-time number one receiver. They spread the money around. They gave a lot of moderate contracts to a bunch of players who were going to be role players. I think the Jets like the I think the Jets offense is built to really kind of spread things around, that there's not, not, not necessarily one designated go-to guy, although Garrett Wilson is the best receiver. But Garrett Wilson had a standout performance, five catches, 95 yards, one of 10 Jets to have at least one reception in this game as Mike White really did a good job distributing, finding the open guy. He was not focused on just targeting one player. He just found the open guy and got the ball to them. The second leading receiver with 64 yards, only two catches, but 64 yards and a touchdown. The long-lost guy, Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore seemed very happy in his post-game press conference. The splits, and you know, you hate to say it, because I hate to keep piling on Zach Wilson, but the splits between Elijah Moore with Zach Wilson as his quarterback and Elijah Moore with anybody else as a quarterback are very pronounced. Elijah Moore has been you know, a borderline 1,000-yard receiver on that kind of pace with anybody else as a quarterback in these two years. He's really not done a whole lot with Zach Wilson. Elijah Moore back in the offense for the Jets. And you know, I mentioned a couple backs. Ty Johnson, who you know had a nice game. We'll give Ty Johnson the credit. 62 yards on five carries, a 32-yard touchdown run. You know, nice job, Ty Johnson. I don't know how sustainable that is. Bam Knight, the rookie, though, the undrafted rookie out of NC State. And this was a guy, I, I remember saying this back in August, that Bam Knight was going to begin the season on the practice squad, but it's inevitable during the course of the season that you're going to suffer injuries at the running back position. Now, you wish it was not the type of injuries the Jets have suffered, but it's inevitable at some point somebody's going to get banked up. And I predicted that in November, December, he's going to get called up and he might make an impact. Now, don't go back and listen to those podcasts because those are probably the same podcasts where I said Mike White should be cut. So you don't need to go back and listen to them. Let's just focus on my correct uh, Bam Knight prediction, not my terrible Mike White analysis. But uh, Bam Knight really looked good yesterday, both as a receiver and as a runner. You know, He finished the game 69 yards on 14 carries and then added three catches for 34 yards. Now, one of those was a shovel pass, so it kind of functioned like a run play. It kind of, you know, I think even the Jets even blocked it like a run play. But Bam Knight looking like a tough runner, like a little extra burst there. This guy could help the Jets. And it was interesting. Salah benched James Robinson yesterday. And Salah kind of indicated that, you know, he felt like the Jets were leaving some yards on the field with Robinson in there. So they went with the rookie. And, so, you know, it pays off for the Jets. And Bam Knight, you know, he... He's earned another game. You know, I don't know how much. You know, I I think Bam Knight's the kind of guy you need to see it against a rushing defense that's a little better because the Bears have a bad run defense. But Bam Knight's certainly making an impression in his first NFL appearance. And then, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, Bryce Huff gets a sack. Uh, John Franklin Myers had a big sack to kind of set the tone early in the second half. The Jets' defensive line, which really struggled with the pass rush in the first half, you know, they. Trevor Simeon got too much time, and the Jets got beaten in coverage a couple of times in that first half, but they came to play in the second half. And again, Bryce Huff and John Franklin Myers both recorded sacks. It, it, the Franklin Myers one was technically the half sack that they gave to Nathan Shepard. It was John Franklin Myers who made the play. And the, I think that overall, the defensive line, the second half, the Jets' defense played like the Jets' defense. They got off to a rough start. Sauce Gardner got beaten and committed a penalty on the play, a big play against Chase Claypool. DJ Reed, who's been phenomenal this year, had one play where in the end zone where the ball was pretty much taken out of his hands. Again, he was in good position, and he just got out, fought for the ball. So the Jets' defense got off to a slow start, but they heated up in the second half. You know, Sauce Gardner was himself in the second half. DJ Reed, I thought, was himself in the second half. You got the t type of Jets' defensive performance you were looking for. And another guy, I know he missed a field goal, but Greg Zorline from 57 yards makes a field goal in this game. Yeah, he missed one later. It was a rainy day, but a 57-yard field goal, that's pretty impressive. Greg Zerline, I keep going back to it. 
Joe Douglas. Get a guy with NFL kicking experience. Get a guy with a track record who shows he can kick in the NFL. It's that simple. Joe Douglas hadn't done it in his first couple of years. This year, he finally did it. And you're getting good results. You're getting a guy like Greg Zerline, who's having a great season for the Jets. Let's keep it up. You know, let's maybe think about giving Greg Zerline an extension. Overall, excellent team win for the Jets. Very encouraging performance out of Mike White, a guy who will be the quarterback, at least for the interim period. I don't know how long he'll be the quarterback, but he certainly earned at least one start. I'd say probably at least two more starts, if not more. And the Jets go to 7-4 and four on the season, back in playoff position. Anyway, that's all for today's episode. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. If you enjoy the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you're listening on a podcast source, please a five-star review. If you're watching on YouTube, please give this episode a big thumbs up. Helps the channel out, helps other Jets fans find the podcast. Have a great Monday, everybody. Enjoy the victory. We'll be back tomorrow to talk more Jets.